Let's delve into a well-known Bible story where Jesus faces off with the devil in the wilderness. It's like a classic clash between good and evil, with Jesus right in the middle. Imagine the scene. Jesus, a man from Nazareth turned spiritual revolutionary, who when he was baptized and the Spirit of God rested permanently on him like a majestic dove visibly and a voice from heaven, declaring and confirming his lordship as we read in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 3 verse 17, and lo a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This same Jesus Christ was immediately led up by the Spirit of God into the wilderness, wandering into the desert. God wanted him there. And there, in the scorching heat and swirling dust, he faces off against none other than Satan himself. Now, why would the devil bother with this guy who's all about love and kindness? We are on a quest to understand this spectacular face-off in the wilderness, to reveal the secrets tucked away in the details of Jesus being tempted and all the things the story can teach us. In the rugged terrain of the wilderness, Jesus found himself fasting, contemplating and preparing for his profound journey ahead. A period of 40 days he was in the wilderness without food or water. Enter Satan, the cunning adversary, ready to weave temptations that played on the very essence of humanity. Why did Satan choose this moment? Was it the vulnerability of hunger, the weariness of solitude, or the imminent weight of his divine mission? Perhaps you might find the answer as you continue along with us in this. Let us quickly have an overview of the temptations of Jesus in the wilderness brought to him by Satan. We will attempt to look in depth into them later on in this video. The first temptation unfolded as Satan urged Jesus to turn stones into bread. It wasn't just about satisfying hunger, it was a whisper that resonated with the human struggle for comfort, immediate gratification, and the vulnerability of physical needs. Then came the suggestion to leap from the pinnacle of the temple, tempting Jesus to showcase his divine identity in a spectacular way. It tapped into the human desire for recognition, validation, and the temptation to take shortcuts to achieve greatness. And finally, the grand offer all the kingdoms of the world in exchange for a moment of worship. It wasn't merely about power, it was a challenge to Jesus' unwavering commitment to God's plan, hinting at the allure of worldly influence and authority. Yet Jesus, fully embracing his humanity, resisted each enticement. He didn't succumb to the shortcuts or the immediate gains. Instead, he drew strength from a deeper well, a well of spiritual resilience, unwavering trust in God, and a profound understanding of his divine purpose. Significance of the story before we dive a little deeper into the talk's analysis the temptations, let us learn what is significant about the story of Jesus' temptation. The temptation of Jesus holds profound significance within the framework of our Christian beliefs. The account of Satan tempting Jesus in the wilderness is primarily based on the biblical narrative found in the Gospels, particularly in Matthew 4, Mark 1, and Luke 4. 1. Purpose of Temptation the temptation of Jesus is often understood as a crucial episode in his earthly ministry. It served as a test of his faithfulness, obedience, and commitment to God's plan. Satan's aim was to exploit vulnerable moments like Jesus' hunger after fasting for 40 days and divert him from the divine mission. The temptations targeted core aspects of human experience, physical needs, public recognition, and the pursuit of power. 2 identification with humanity. It is our belief as Christians that Jesus, though divine, took on human form incarnation. The temptation demonstrates that he fully experienced human struggles and temptations yet remained sinless. By facing and resisting these temptations, Jesus empathizes with the human condition, serving as a relatable example for believers. This identification with humanity is seen as part of God's redemptive plan. This resonates very well with the idea in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 17 to 18. Wherefore, in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. 3. Spiritual Warfare 
the temptation narrative is seen as part of a broader spiritual conflict between the forces of good and evil. Allowing Satan to tempt Jesus highlights the cosmic battle between God's kingdom and the powers of darkness. Jesus' victory symbolizes the triumph of righteousness over sin and the defeat of Satan's schemes. 4. Confirmation of Messiahship Jesus' ability to resist temptation affirmed his role as the Messiah, the Chosen One of God. This event solidifies Jesus' qualifications to fulfill the Messianic prophecies, demonstrating that he is the Son of God and the Promised Savior. 5. Divine Plan and Sovereignty We believe also in God's sovereignty over all events, including allowing Satan's temptations. The narrative underscores God's control over circumstances. Allowing Satan to tempt Jesus was part of God's overarching plan, showcasing that even in moments of trial, God remains in ultimate control. The three tests and the patterns they share with all other tests in the Bible. According to the New Testament account, Satan tempted Jesus three times in the wilderness. 1. Turn stones into bread Matthew 4 verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Satan tempted Jesus to use his divine power to turn stones into bread as Jesus was fasting. This temptation targeted Jesus' physical needs, appealing to his hunger after 40 days of fasting. It could have been effective by exploiting a basic human desire for sustenance and comfort. So we must be wary about how we accept strategies that seem to provide for our basic needs especially when God hasn't said so especially one that forces us into a demonstration of miracle powers. Jesus resisted, emphasizing the importance of spiritual nourishment and obedience to God's will over satisfying immediate physical needs. Matthew 4 verse 4 But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. 2. In jump from the temple. Satan suggested that Jesus throw himself off the pinnacle of the temple, quoting scripture to support the idea that angels would rescue him. This temptation aimed at challenging Jesus to test God's protection and demonstrate his divine identity publicly. Perhaps we tempt God in the same way when we ask God to show up to satisfy our own need for respect, fame, and honor. I believe to get God to do something you have to first be convinced that God loves you and hears you. This might just defeat the need for a showy miracle. 3. Bow down and worship Satan. Satan offered Jesus dominion over all the kingdoms of the world if he would worship him. This temptation targeted Jesus' mission by proposing a shortcut to achieve global influence without going through the suffering of the cross. This by far is the biggest temptation, because twice Jesus was tempted to not go to the cross the Garden of Gethsemane was the second time. The desire to take the shortcut was so great that angels had to come strengthen him when he prayed. 1. Human Desires and Needs Temptations often target basic human needs or desires, such as hunger as in the wilderness temptation or the desire for knowledge and wisdom as in the Garden of Eden. 2 twisting or misusing scripture. In both the wilderness temptation and the temptation in the Garden of Eden, the tempter. Satan in the former, a serpent in the latter attempts to use scripture or God's words to manipulate the situation or justify sinful actions. 3. Testing faith and obedience. The essence of these temptations is to test the individual's faith, trust, and obedience to God. Whether it's Jesus in the wilderness or Adam and Eve in the garden, the central question is whether they will follow God's commands or succumb to the temptation to go against them. 4. Shortcuts and Alternative Paths The temptations often present an alternative, seemingly easier path to achieve desires or goals without adhering to God's plan. This is evident in Satan's offers to Jesus for immediate comfort, public spectacle, and worldly power as well as in the promise of knowledge and godlike status in the Garden of Eden. 5. Victory Through Obedience Jesus achieves victory by choosing obedience to God over the allure of sinful desires or shortcuts. This reinforces the importance of faith, trust, and adherence to God's plan. Why you must be tempted to like Jesus. 
you will experience tests and temptations, and they won't be easy for you at all. The idea of tests and trials is often linked to personal growth, character development, and spiritual maturity. If you are ever destined for anything great which by the way every believer is, you will face your own test and it is going to be just you and God. Here are a few perspectives on why tests might be considered necessary. 1. Character Development Tests and trials are believed to shape and strengthen one's character. Overcoming challenges allows individuals to develop qualities such as resilience, perseverance, patience and humility. The difficulties people face can mold them into more compassionate, understanding, and empathetic individuals. James 1 verse 2 to 4 Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. 2. Faith and Trust Facing tests can deepen one's faith and trust in God or a greater purpose. The process of navigating through difficulties often requires people to rely on their faith, reinforcing their spiritual connection and trust in God's guidance. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. 3. Learning and Wisdom Tests provide opportunities for learning and gaining wisdom. Adversity often brings valuable lessons and insights that contribute to personal and intellectual growth. Like in the case of Joseph, I believe he learned the wisdom and skills to be an effective prime minister right from his days of testing and trying Potiphar's house. Mistakes made during challenging times can serve as powerful teachers, fostering wisdom and discernment. This is a beautiful verse and worthy of thinking again. But that's what we are called into Psalm 119 verse 71, it was good for me to be afflicted, so that I might learn your decrees. Adversity is seen as a teacher, providing opportunities for learning and gaining wisdom through understanding and applying God's principles. 4. Appreciation of Blessings Going through tests can lead to a greater appreciation for the positive aspects of life. Experiencing hardship often highlights the importance of gratitude for blessings, fostering a sense of thankfulness and contentment. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Tests prompt gratitude by highlighting the importance of recognizing and appreciating the blessings, even in challenging circumstances. 5. Preparation for Greater Challenges Tests may be seen as preparation for future challenges. Overcoming smaller obstacles can equip us with the skills and mindset needed to face more significant difficulties. It's a way of building strength and resilience for the journey ahead. Luke 16 verse 10 Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Overcoming smaller challenges prepares individuals for greater responsibilities, aligning with the idea that faithfulness in small matters leads to readiness for larger tasks. 6. Purification and Refinement This is one I have been wanting to get to. Tests are a means of purifying and refining individuals. Just as metal is purified through fire, facing trials is believed to refine the human spirit, removing impurities and strengthening one's character. I personally have experienced purification in the way I think even about God from coming out of a trying period. You will despise the process, it's okay but it's working in you something greater. Purpose and Calling Tests may be seen as a way of aligning individuals with their purpose or calling. Navigating challenges can clarify one's values and priorities, guiding them toward a more fulfilling and purposeful life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Tests are seen as part of God's plan, aligning individuals with their purpose and future, ultimately contributing to a more fulfilling and purposeful life. Valuable Insights from the Narrative The story of Jesus' temptation provides valuable insights on overcoming temptation for believers. Here are some key lessons that can be drawn from this biblical narrative. 1. Rely on Scripture. Psalm 119 verse 11 I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. 
Jesus countered each temptation by quoting scripture. Knowing and relying on God's word provides a powerful defense against temptation. Regularly engage with the Bible to gain a deep understanding of God's teachings. Use scripture as a guide and source of strength when facing temptations. 2. Prioritize spiritual nourishment. Matthew 4 verse 4 Jesus answered, It is written man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus emphasized the importance of spiritual sustenance over immediate physical needs. So cultivate a strong spiritual life through prayer, meditation, and fellowship. Prioritize spiritual nourishment to build resilience in the face of various temptations. 3. Avoid testing God. Matthew 4 verse 7 Jesus answered him, It is also written do not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus rejected the temptation to test God's protection through a dramatic display. Trust in God's promises but avoid putting yourself in unnecessary risky situations. Wise decision-making and faith can coexist without unnecessarily testing God's intervention. 4. Reject the allure of worldly power. Matthew 4 verse 8 to 10 again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. 5. Stay humble and obedient. Jesus' humility and obedience to God's will were central to his victory over temptation. So cultivate humility and a willingness to submit to God's plan. Obedience, even in the face of challenges, is key to overcoming temptation. 6. Identify and resist temptation early. Jesus recognized and resisted temptation promptly, not allowing it to gain a foothold. Be vigilant and self-aware. Identify potential areas of temptation in your life and take proactive steps to resist them early before they become more challenging to overcome. 7. Lean on God's strength. Jesus relied on God's strength to resist temptation. Philippians 4 verse 13 I can do all this through him who gives me strength acknowledge your dependence on God's strength. Pray for guidance and empowerment when facing temptations, recognizing that overcoming them is not solely through personal effort but with divine assistance. Training ahead of temptation. Preparing ahead for moments of temptation involves spiritual training and reliance on God's Spirit. Here are some practical steps based on biblical principles. 1. Regular prayer and seeking God's guidance. Matthew 26 verse 41 Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 2. Immersing yourself in scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105 Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Be regularly read and meditate on the Bible. Memorize key verses that relate to areas of potential temptation. Let God's Word guide your thoughts and actions. 3. Accountability and Fellowship Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 to 10 2 are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor if either of them falls down, one can help the other up. Foster strong Christian relationships for mutual support. Share your struggles with a trustworthy friend or mentor who can provide accountability and encouragement. 4. Fasting and Self-Discipline 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27 I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Practice occasional fasting as a form of self-discipline. This can help develop control over physical desires and enhance spiritual awareness. 5. Cultivating a heart of gratitude. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Foster a spirit of gratitude. Focus on the positive aspects of life and recognize God's blessings. A grateful heart can strengthen resilience in the face of challenges. 6. Guarding your mind. Philippians 4 verse 8 Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things.
Be intentional about what you allow into your mind. Avoid negative influences and choose to focus on thoughts that align with God's truth and goodness. 7. Regularly Receiving the Sacraments 1 Corinthians 11 verse 28 Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. Participate in the sacraments of communion and other practices of self-examination. These moments can bring spiritual renewal and awareness of God's grace. By incorporating these practices into your daily life, you can prepare your heart and spirit for moments of temptation. Remember that relying on God's Spirit and staying connected to Him through prayer and Scripture are foundational elements of this preparation. Stay blessed, beloved of God.